I'm Gary Erickson. And I'm Tyler Hogue. We became best buds through the heavy music scene. And now we're doing a podcast, breaking down our favorite bands, albums, and shows. This is All Consuming Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to another episode. This is the discussion of Emery. Yeah. We do what we want, which is what we do on the show. <laughs> we do what we want. This this album, and I think people are going to be kind of surprised that we chose this album to talk about Emery for, but I know that you know there's a special connection between us with this album. Because <laughs> we were in college together when this released in like 2011, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Um, and we saw them live for this tour. Right? And I truthfully think this album is extremely slept on by Emery fans. Yeah, I think most Emery fans would be like, why aren't you doing their first album or mm. The Question or even like a controversial one, one of their newer ones. But yeah, we chose this one because um, we listened to it a lot that summer. Yeah, uh, I think it's like maybe our first year where we like we knew each other and we were hanging out a ton. Yeah. Um, you know what else came out right around this time, like a month away? What? You know what? Else? We don't know what else we listened to that summer a ton. The Crimson Armada it's... Conviction. Oh yeah. Okay. Came out like definitely. a month after this. And we so whenever I hear these songs, you know, yeah. I like the shovel glass. I always think of that album too. And what's the deal? Spotify. Why isn't conviction on Spotify? Yeah. I've always wondered that too. Yeah, it's, Crimson Armada. It's owned man. by a different Yeah, it's owned by a different record label than their other album, which is on Spotify, uh, so that might be part of it. But I remember when that Crimson Armada album release. Yeah, we listened to it a ton. I thought you were going to say yeah. maybe the Zombie EP, but that was before. Yeah, that was Had before. Had to be before. Year before, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we listened to this a ton, but it wasn't the first time we listened to Emery. And, and they've been around, I mean, this 2011, they've been around since like early 2000s. Um, mm-hmm. When was the first time you actually listened to Emery? So my first time was like their music video for Walls when I was like in high school. Yeah. Who knows when, but I remember not being very impressed with it and <laughs> not really liking them for that. I didn't get yeah. into Emory until like studying politics. Like I think it was like a single on like one of like the Tooth and Nail sampler albums or whatever where like check out all the latest Tooth and Nail stuff and I heard studying politics and I was like, "Oh, they, they sound pretty good. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I still remember the video. I remember Toby looking like a middle-aged dude at sweat, in a sweatband around his head, you know, <laughs> screaming in a mosh pit and crawling over people. And I was like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> but uh, yeah, what about what about you? When's your first time? So Did you know them before you knew me? There, This is weird. There was a fan video that for... So cold you could see your breath on YouTube off of the question, right? There's like a fan music video, but I, the, for, this is the first time I've ever heard Emery, and like I thought that was Emery, if that makes sense. Like it was a fan music video created, not really okay. the band, but it had a right. ton of views. And so I assumed it was like the actual music video. So these kids in the band in that music video. I thought it was mm-hmm. Emery, but it turns out Emery was a lot older than those kids. That wasn't even like <laughs> even close to the band, right? But I, I remember really uh, liking it. And that song, there's not it's not as heavy. There's not as many screens, but it's cool. You know, I, I would say it's more like an Amberlin song or something, right? And I think you can kind of yeah, compare yeah, maybe yeah. Emery to an Amberlin or kind of that alternative genre. Um, and then mm-hmm. I went back after that and listened to the week's end and I was like, this is some awesome stuff, right? I, unlike you love walls, dude, the ending mm-hmm. of walls, 
the back and forth singing. That whole the first like six tracks on the week's end are like I don't hmm. <laughs> Top 100 songs. I don't know. Like, they're, I play them a ton. Uh, and so much so, I think the week's end made me fall in love with Emery. I'm wearing an Emery shirt today. It says Emo Dad. Emery. And I tried to convince my wife to name our kids Emery. Both of them? She said no. Well, the first, mm. <laughs> the first one, we're having a girl. I was like, Emery would be a just an awesome girl name, you know, like be so cool. And she's like, ah, yeah. How about you name the next one? And I was like, oh, perfect, you know. And then we're, we're definitely having, having another kid now. <laughs> we're having a boy <laughs> next, you know. And uh, I was like, yeah. I mean, Emery could be a boy's name. And she's like, nah, you know. And then we didn't name either Emery. And I'm just like, wait, what? How did this happen? That was like my plan, you know, to mm. to name one of my kids Emery to be like this hip emo dad, but I didn't. I didn't get that. <laughs> My wife's going to listen and be like, that is not how it happened, Tyler. It's exactly how it happened. It's really how it happened. Everyone, this is the last time Tyler's on the podcast, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, see, I'm talking like a million miles an hour because of how much I really do like Emery, and I don't even know like the justification of like mm. why I like them so much. It's not typically the genre I listen to. It's not like the typical music that's on my, you know, Spotify playlist. But every time I listen to, especially, you know, the first half of Emery's discography, like I love it. Yeah, man. Well, should we go uh, get into? Some of the lineup and whatnot. We haven't really done that in yeah. some of our discussion episodes. But this one is actually kind of interesting. Yeah, it's different. So this is the first album. Albums. Yeah, this is the first one without um, their backup vocalist that goes back and forth with Toby, Devin Shelton, right? Mm -hmm. um, so he left the band. And that is when uh, they kind of all sat down and agreed that they're going to make their heaviest album that they've ever made. Um which I think might be true if you only listen to the first half of the album. <laughs> yep, that's, there's truth to that, yeah. So yeah, and, and it was a unanimous, well, I don't know if it was unanimous, but it was a consensus for the decision, according to Toby. Um, but uh, I, I guess, so I guess Devin did write two songs on the album, Fix Me, the very last song, Mm. on the regular release and on the deluxe edition he wrote crumbling and if you know those songs they're very awesome lyrically and they're yeah. very soft very acoustic um but they're not really i don't know the highlight for me sure you know what i mean catch yeah catch my drift? for sure so on this album there are four dudes in the band instead of five so we got toby right lead vocals bass Screamed vocals. You got yeah. Matt Carter, guitars and backing vocals, where before he wasn't doing that. Um, Josh Head, who's like the dude with the super long hair that you see a bunch, doing screaming vocals, keyboard synthesizers, programming. Yeah, yeah. All right, we, we saw him at the concert, and we saw them in concert, and we saw that guy, and he was, everyone called him Jesus. <laughs> I don't know why. Because uh, uh, he had the hair and Dave the beard. Powell. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he did, yeah. We have Dave Powell on drums and percussion. Mm. So the fun part about this that I really like to do when you look at lineups, and especially like, you know, 10 years back, because there's actually like a history of it, Yeah, is seeing where they've gone and like what they're doing. And though I, th I think these are all the same guys in the band, but Devin's back still. Yeah. Um, it's really cool to see the different music they make. But... uh do I want to jump into their side projects? Is that a good time to jump? Side projects? All I know of all yeah. I know of is uh Matt and Toby. Okay. There's so we more. know of Matt and Toby cuz they have that like I Quit Church album, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 Bad Christian. So yeah, there's more. The I think everyone 
Yeah, everyone in that band has a side project. Okay. Well, so I'll share some it, of them, it, and uh, yeah. maybe some of you are going to go down a Google uh, or a YouTube thing to find some yeah. stuff. So Devin Shelton, when he left the band, um, he had his own project with his own name that was mostly R and B. R and B, really? Yeah, R and B. Um, and I kind of listened to it, and it's it's like a lot of acoustic stuff too. Um, I think he has stuff on Spotify. Otherwise, you can find it all on YouTube. Um, and he did that like when he quit before, and then when I guess he quit again on another year. And so he did another album on that. Um, the other guy, Dave Powell, their drummer, this one's pretty cool. He's in an indie rock band called Beyond Oceans with two other people from Haste the Day. Oh, really? So there's, yeah, Jason Barnes, mm -hmm. um, which I believe is their guitarist, and Brennan Schalk, which is the guy with the really awesome singing voice from Haste Today. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Beyond Oceans, not on Spotify, but check out their stuff on YouTube. It's like if Haste Today did acoustic songs or, or more chill indie rock kind of, you know, really? the classic crime style. And huh. so I listened to a couple of those right before this, and I was like, I need to find this EP and listen to the whole thing. And I hope they do more because that, that's a pretty cool side project right there. Are we talking like recent? Or are we talking a long time ago? Uh, 2012, 2012 was the EP. Yeah, but I I think they do stuff locally hmm. to them. So I think they're still active, but not like active, active, you know? Right. Yep. And of course, Matt and Toby. Yeah. Which is what you mentioned. Uh, and they they have two albums out. It's very acoustic and like kind of electronic, mm -hmm. maybe poppy, and and also some worship. And I guess they they said that they made it because they didn't want. They wrote the songs that originally for Emery, but they didn't really fit with Emery with the direction that Emery's going. So, hmm. to me, they they seem like Emery songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. That's interesting. Yeah, so that, that's a lot of side projects and stuff. So these guys are pretty busy. I mean, they also have the huge side project. Yeah. Bad Christian. It's it's interesting to me. Like, so we, we do what we want, this album, uh, with Devin taking his hiatus because, I mean, he's back, right, with the band now. But being gone and not really on this album, it's, it's interesting because I think a lot of Emory fans identify or really enjoyed – his vocals, especially going back and forth with Toby, like it was just, it was pretty unique to have those two voices and this album doesn't have it. Right. And so it's a different sound for Emery. And maybe that's why, um, we do what we want. Isn't as popular. It doesn't Emery fans don't fully identify with, with what it is, but it is really cool because I remember like vividly when we turned on the first track of the song, the shovel glass, and we were like, bro, this song yeah. is heavy for Emery. Just heavy in general, I guess. Yeah, it, take Emery out of it. Yeah, it, it's a heavy song. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think what turned a lot of people off, you know, was that it, it, it wasn't the, the, you know, two singers, you know, duetting together. Right. So, so, but I do think that this is a great album for people that aren't into Emery. And they they don't get it like what's so great, and I feel like this is a good, a good album to be like, uh, you know, to check them out in in a different way than what their top yeah. ten songs are, you know, um, especially if you're more into the really heavy hardcore stuff because this, these you know the first half of this album definitely hits a lot harder. Yeah. But. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I think too like Devin's voice is pretty unique and identify like you can identify it specifically in contrast to toby's um in previous albums and so you not having that is different but so you said matt carter does backing vocals yeah is he the voice or is it double toby is it i guess it has to be matt carter 
Well, I would say so, but there's also Aaron Sprinkle who did backing vocals in studio. Oh, in studio. So Aaron Sprinkle did like the final production touch. Um, yeah. What's interesting about this is those first six songs that we really, really like. Yeah. They're mixed by Jason Sukoff, which we've talked about like three times because he's mixed War of Ages. Um, right. He's yeah, done yeah. August Burns Red and Demon Hunter and stuff like that, among many, many, many other things. A yeah. lot heavier, right? Where the tracks, the last half of the tracks, except for one, were mixed by a guy named Craig Alvin. And he's most known for Amy Grant. Stop. <laughs> so if that tells really? you the the sound difference required to mix, right? Yeah, so the first six, Jason Sukoff, seven, eight, and ten, Craig Alvin, and track nine was mixed by Matt Carter. Huh. So Yeah. Pretty interesting stuff, huh? It really yeah. does feel like I, I remember listening to it like back in the day, driving my Jeep and like you'd listen to it like this is such a great album. And eventually you got to a point where you're like, all right, what's what else? Like, well, what's the next album? Like, let's let's take yeah. the CD out, put something else in. And it's usually around six, seven, eight. You know, I just I, that's, that's I, I, I feel that I, I do feel that. But I do I do think even in those songs, the themes of this album are awesome. I think that's another reason why I really like this album. The the songs and the lyrics are top notch. And the thing is with Emery, and you said this to me, Gary. You oh said boy. this to me. And you showed me, we were driving, obviously in your Jeep, going to Spokane for something. And you're like, gosh, what was the song, dude? Something about, you're going you're gonna to know it. Something about a knife, Telling the story of a murder after the devil beats his wife. That's what it is. After the devil and beats em- his wife. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> You're like, oh man. He's like, em- and I re- we were listening to the song, going to Spokane, and you're like, this is why I love Emery because they tell a story. Yeah. And they really do, right? And so you listen yep. to their lyrics, and it's not just like, you know, the typical like verses. A few Throw up, words you that don't really this. mean a ton. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a full blown like story. You listen to lyrics and like some songs have an actual plot. Right? Yeah. That's why I really but, like uh, yeah, so their next album, every yeah. song is a Bible story. It's from a Bible story from the first person. So there's like a song about David and Goliath. There's a song about uh uh David and Bathsheba. There's a song about uh, you know Adam and Eve, and like they're they're all tied with Bible stories, and I really like that about that album. But I guess you wouldn't Wait. have known that unless they explicitly what you didn't know that. Wait, you're saying? Hold on. You're saying the one that the one they released on "You Were Never Alone," the one they released on Back yeah. Christian 2015. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Like taken for a bath. That. that song yeah. is about Bathsheba. Oh my goodness! Yep. You it's know, like and Noah's I actually Ark like and... that. That truthfully, that album too um, is majorly slept on, and I love it. Not heavy, like going from no. the album we're talking about. We do what we want to um, the next album. Like it's not even close to as heavy, but it's as good lyrically, right? Yeah. Okay, so sticking with this album though, what is your <laughs> Sorry for sidetracking. Dude, we could just go everywhere. Like I feel like we we kind of are we're just doing an entire Emery, you know, album talk, mm-hmm. but whatever. I mean, it's what it is. So on We Do What We Want, what is your favorite song? Um, that's really hard. But I would I'd probably go with Shovel Glass. It's kind of interesting, like organically, it came up on our Discord this album yeah. that we were going to talk about. We already kind of planned like we were going to be doing this album. We might have posted that we were listening to this song or whatever. But I remember like Trey, one of our guys in our Discord, he said something like, oh my gosh, we're, like this album's awesome. This this song, and it was Shovel Glass, is so heavy. Mm-hmm. And somebody was like, it might have been... <sighs> 
Love is Arson. Uh huh. Maybe. Maybe he Apollyon. Might have said that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think it was Apollyon was like, yeah, you know, Emery's okay. I don't really know. And then he's like, yo, listen to this song. Like it goes hard. And I mean, it is like if you want to if you want to get a heavy guy to like Emery, you throw the song on there and like, okay, I can kind of you know vibe with this band. Yeah. So what about you? So my favorite song on the album is The Curse of Perfect Days. Not the acoustic version? No, no. Didn't they, I mean, the acoustic version is good. Didn't they also do a country version? Have you heard that? <laughs> they, didn't they do... It wasn't like... Was it on Revival, that album? I think so. With where the they cowboy like boot? redid their songs? Yeah. I think it might be. Oh, it's not on there. Oh, okay. But the reason I love The Curse of Perfect Days, and it's so interesting because like our listeners are like, Tyler, you always hate on the soft songs. You always hate on the ballads. You always hate on... And The Curse of Perfect Days, I mean, there's a little bit of screaming, but it's a fairly soft song. Um, I just really dig it. And like the lyrics... I kind of, I, I identify with, and it gets, I don't know, like, you feel something, you know, like, isn't you feel song, like you listen to it. Isn't, isn't that song about um, a real, like, a nightmare that he had? Or you don't know? Uh, I'm not fully sure about the, the we'll get to the he bottom wrote of as it. a nightmare. Mm-hmm. We'll get to it with the deep dive, but just this idea of time passing and, like, like, the the, the lyric that, like, the idea that the the thoughts of growing older, like they were never supposed to come. Yeah. You know, like just the dreams of like, I think he says the dreams of getting older were never supposed to come. And like, mm-hmm. I feel that as I'm getting older, I'm like, these were the I'm days that I was like here. dreaming of. Right. Yeah. Like, what would it be like when I'm married and have kids and have, a, you know, um, a, a job and I'm living on my own, like just thinking of those things i used to dream about that stuff and now we're here and it's crazy it's just it's just weird and it's, it's weird how time moves and so I, I don't know man like that song really gets me and it's one of those story songs that you know emery does and it's yeah. it's awesome yeah i really like uh so so toby mentioned that this album is very personal and spiritual for him and I'll just kind of read a thing that he wrote. Um, he said that this album talks about our faith and God, but it never gets too preachy because it's basically talking about me and things I've gone through. I cannot tell you the truth. I can't not tell you the truth of who I am. And this and this time I explored it even further. Uh, it just points in, my, points in my life and in the other guy's lives. Um, and he said some lyrics are about challenging authority and God. And is God real? And what does that even mean? Mm. So it's definitely, and there's a lot of lyrics in this song that are very Christian. And if you know Mm. anything about Emery, okay, if you don't know anything about Emery, uh, these guys love talking about the things that no one wants to talk about. Um, Yeah. And they, you know, they're probably... The reason a lot of people are deconstructing their faith, not necessarily in a bad way, not necessarily in a good sure. way, um, but yeah, they yeah, ask yeah. the Christian questions, why, and on their their podcast, the Bad Christian, um, they they get they get answers from Christians, what their thoughts are. They get answers from atheists um, and whoever, um, even other bands, and they really talk about difficult things and i think sometimes they get in a lot of trouble um from christians uh because they don't address things the way that christians should have or they leave things open or whatever there's just a lot of heat around these guys so i feel like there's there's two groups of people they either really don't like emory or they really do like emory and it's probably the same group that feels about that way about pr- probably not the same group that feels that way about their podcast and their blog and their whole organization. Right. right? Uh, cause that, I think there's other stuff involved in there, but 
yeah, if you don't know about Bad Christian, I think it's worth looking at. They uh, they have some really cool talks about like like they'll, they'll they'll be like is evolution real? And they'll bring on like really smart science dudes who have answers. Mm-hmm. Um they'll talk they'll talk to Christians who believe in like new earth. They'll talk to Christians that believe in old earth. They'll talk to Christians that believe in evolution that don't believe in it. and it gets yeah. They're really good at de-escalating things. Um, I I don't think I've seen an yeah. episode where they've like everyone's yelling, you know. No. Um, it, but yeah, that that's kind of what what that whole world whole whole world is. It's interesting, like the ideas, like that for us too. Like I feel like between Gary and me, like there's things that me and you like we don't fully agree on, but like we don't like yell at each other. And I think there's, like, that truth, and I think a lot of times, like, Christian, Christians especially, like, we're, we're so caught up in these little things that, like, we hurt others because mm-hmm. of those little things that, in the grand scheme of things, do they really matter? Yeah. Right? And I think that's, like, the heart of, like, what bad Christian is, is, like, these things that we've been doing forever that, like, do they fully matter? Does, like, if there's old earth, new earth, or whatever, like... Should we be like causing division because of that? Yeah, you know those types of things, and it, it's pretty it's pretty crazy. Do I, I do we agree with everything they do? Probably not, right? But yeah. I I mean I think there's a lot of value in in some of the things they talk about. Yeah. So what about the record label? The do, you know, do you know all the bands now, that are on BC Music? No, I, they I don't think they still they still have BC Music going. Yeah. Pretty sure they do. Oh, really? I mean, if you look, I remember one, if you look on Spotify, one... look at all their albums owned by BC Music. Interesting. I remember the first one that I I remember getting on there was the uh, King's Kaleidoscope. Their first like legit one that they released outside of Marso Music yeah. was on BC. Yep, and that was awesome. I mean, all, I love all what King's Kaleidoscope does, but I remember them being on there and like, dude, this is legit. Yeah. Who else is on there? So you got uh, Emery. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Matt and Toby. Surprise. Uh, the Classic Crime. Uh, <laughs> yeah, him, yeah, yeah. Him and his wife's band, the Vocal Few. King's Kaleidoscope. Mm-hmm. Abandoned Kansas. Pacific Colt Gold. That sounds familiar, but I don't know that one. Uh, Zach Bolin, do you know who that is? Yeah, from Citizens. The, uh, C- Citizens and Saints. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and House of Heroes. So that is BC Music. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I think they they've done a lot of cool stuff um, through their side projects and through Bad Christian. Um, and I, I really love everything that Emery's done, even their new stuff. Like, not I don't think it's their best albums, but I still like it, and I still really enjoy um, Emery. And I'm, I'm excited to dive into this album. Yeah, me too. And what I really like about these guys, so like their lyrics, right? They really talk. They they talk about everything, and they question everything. Like, yeah, they do. Um, yes, yeah. But they don't call themselves a Christian band. They call themselves Christians in a band. So, yeah. wherever that you know now, hits you. <laughs> we, we we were joking about this because we were we were talking about the situation, Gary and I, and uh, I asked Gary, or maybe Gary asked me, we're like, are we a Christian podcast, or are we just Christians in a podcast? <laughs> I don't know the answer, man. I think we're just Christians in a podcast. Sure, yeah. Can a or podcast wait, have a Are we a Christian? <laughs> no, man, that debate is so is so interesting. The idea of Christians in a band versus a Christian band, you know, and you can get some people can get pretty like heated on it and stuff. And... I think yeah, I think what people really want to hear is are you a worship or a gospel band versus christians Mm -hmm. in a band right because like uh, that that is the difference right a christian band what they mean is for today every song's about god 
it's a worship album every yeah. time, right? And then you got Christians in Sleepy a band, giant. and it, it's like not every song is about God, and it's just about like the Christian worldview and what people are going through. And I think that's really the differentiating factor. And I don't think, you know, we should just start doing some non Christian music, and then we could be like, see, we're not a Christian podcast. We're Christians in a podcast. Yeah. So up next, it, Under Oath. Oh, wait, we yeah. already did that. Oh, dang. oh dang it, we <laughs> already did. Oh, gosh. You know, it's 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 interesting, th- those ideas. But I, I, love, I love now, like, looking back at us when we were in college during this time. Like, how we thought back then. Like, if they... We just called everyone a Christian band. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, yeah, they mentioned God once, Christian band. Oh, yeah, we heard that there was a Christian in the band, Christian band. Yeah. Didn't matter if their their songs were about God or not. Yeah. Are they going to talk about Jesus? At yeah, it's kind of like O Sleeper. You know, they had two Christians in the band and two yeah. non-Christians. And you're like, they're a Christian band because the singer is the Christian. And, you know. <laughs> you know. So speaking he, he of writes, that, he writes the lyrics or I, whatever. I think we transition here. Yeah, we saw them live in Spokane with O Sleeper. With O Sleeper at that dude, this this venue that we saw it at. Do you remember? Was it called like the A Club or something? At the time, it was the A Club. Yeah. Then it was the you pin. go up these like stairs. Mm-hmm. The pin. See, I don't remember that, but I remember you go up these stairs, right? And you get to like the second floor area. There's like a bar side with like pool tables, and there's like then this bar, and then on the other side is this smaller stage, right? With a pretty decent size to stand area to stand, but it wasn't like a big venue at all. Yeah, it's like medium. It's like not not Maybe the medium. Yeah, medium. It could probably fit. I don't know. Less than 100 people. So- Probably. Yeah. I mean, I remember the show, like, not being – there were there wasn't that many people there. Yeah. Like, I felt like there was room. You know, we just recently went to an August Burns Red show and Kill Switch Engage, and there wasn't room no. to be really around. Yeah. There was room at the Emory show. Oh, yeah. Right? Now, what did you think about Emory Live, though? Dude, I barely remember. Like, so I remember I, quite a bit. I remember them pulling out a chair and doing a couple acoustic songs and saying, yep. really? Um, cause that's <laughs> not what I wanted. Uh, they did yeah. start really good. Um, I remember the Jesus guy screaming a ton and being like, whoa, like Emery is so heavy. Yeah. And I remember Toby's hair, <laughs> like, Super, super long and like pushed to the side, like Anne Berlin style. Yeah. Yes. And I was like, that's, it's just weird looking seeing him with that. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. What do you remember? About I remember, Emory? I remember, okay, I remember a few things. I remember specifically, yes, keyboardist, screamer vocals. He goes nuts, man. Like, I remember watching him and just, he's into it. It's like, I think during this time, if you were a keyboardist in like these heavy bands, mm-hmm. like you had to just go hard and he goes hard too. And it, that was fun. And he is on a lot of these songs, um, screaming and especially in the first six songs, right? He does a lot of yeah. stuff. And I think before, like I thought Toby did a lot of that, but it really isn't right. And so it's, it's, it was cool to see him do that. Um, I thought they sounded really good live. I think Toby has an amazing voice, even live. Like, it sounds just like the recording to me. Um, But one thing I do remember, like, vividly, like, he didn't necessarily give, like, a Jesus talk, but he mentioned, like, their mission as a band. Do you remember this? No. Dude, let's hear it. He said... He said one time, like, he remembers the first time someone, like, came to him and said that they were thinking about oh, right. killing themselves. Mm-hmm. And 
their music, Emery's music, they identified with it and it helped them get through that. And like Toby said, that's what we want to do. We want to help people with our music. We want to, you know, um, write songs that people can listen to and maybe they went through the same problems we're going through. And like, I think that goes back to our Christians in a band versus a Christian band. They're singing about themselves and the things that they go through. And yes, because they're singing about themselves and writing about themselves, there's going to be some Christian um, things that come out of it, but not all the time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He's singing about himself. And just that, that idea of their music inspiring others. And I thought that was a pretty cool yeah, I remember that yeah. thing to say. It was It was really cool. And it felt really sincere, and I always feel like when I hear Toby talk and see him on uh, Bad Christian stuff or live streams, like I feel like he's super sincere and an awesome dude. Yeah. You know, why don't we ever go up to people after shows and be like, hey, you, you did good. It, it was fun. <laughs> you know, like, like whenever we're done with the show, we're like, <laughs> we're out. Let's go buy merch and head, see you know, go get an omelet or something. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of remember him like saying, "Yeah, I'm gonna be here playing pool or whatever. Come hang out, come talk." And uh, we were like, "Let's go." I remember. So before they played, right? Oh, sleeper was up, and yeah. so after after Oh, sleeper played, I went to the bathroom. There's a long line, and their bathroom was like you know a urinal and one toilet that was just over flooded and clogged and a nightmare, right? And <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I remember I was peeing, there's two urinals and I looked over and there's this super tall dude and I, I can't remember who I thought he looked like, but we washed hands together and I looked and I was like, Hey, and I, it was Micah Kennard from O Sleeper. So I have a claim to fame for peeing next to him. Yeah. That's awesome. It was just really awkward, yeah, making that eye contact, washing hands, like, hey, and then being like, that's my Kennard. And being really... This was after O Sleeper played? Yeah, after they played, yeah. He must have had to go, like, real bad. Yeah, I, okay, I remember that. That's funny. But, that's hilarious. That's your claim to fame, Gary. Yep, one of many. Well, I've, I've peed next to other musicians. I, I'll save those have you ever seen? Have you ever seen musicians just, like, that you know? That other people probably don't necessarily know, like in the streets or whatever, anytime. No. So, well, yeah. I okay. live in Spokane, dude. Dude, Mike. one time we went, <laughs> me and you, we went to Sherry's and Disciple was there. Okay, yeah, yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Right? But that's. There was a time I went to Fit for a King and uh, the lead singer of da, 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 The Ongoing Concept was there. Oh. I was like, hey, that looks like the dude from The Ongoing Concept. And I was like, well, they live in Idaho. No, of course not. <laughs> of course not. So, of course not. I don't, I don't talk to you. I went to, <laughs> I, my wife and I went to Portland to go see Lecrae, Andy Minio, um, and someone else. Um, and anyways, we got there really early, and we were just kind of walking Portland kind of by the venue. And uh, we see Lecrae walking like with somebody else or whatever. And my wife, she's not like us to where we're like, oh my gosh, we're not going to say anything. My wife was like, hey, Lecrae, can I get a picture? Can we get a picture together? <laughs> right? And I'm like, oh, this is so awkward. Oh my gosh, you know, or whatever. And like, he like looked at us and he's like, ah, oh, no, I got to hurry. I'm out. I, I can't be, I can't take a picture. Sorry. And he just walked away and I was like, that was messed up, you know, but he, he probably had some. <laughs> probably had somewhere to go but i was like see that's why i don't do anything because i don't want to get let down right yeah. like <laughs> i was gonna say if it if it worked i was like you should have her come to shows with us <laughs> like, this is my husband tyler and his friend gary they want to say hi <laughs> <laughs> we're in the background hi <laughs> okay yeah. wow yeah no that that's how i was talking to like wolves at the gate i was like so you're reformed huh <laughs> like so you awkward. You asked them if they were reformed Christians. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, and he's like, "Yep." So yep. you were like, <laughs> "Who? What books you reading?" <laughs> so uh, you guys practice reformed theology. How do you feel about John Calvin? He said that. <laughs> <laughs> that's John hilarious. Piper, huh? He's he's, he's pretty great. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. 
All right, well, I think that's kind of going to bring our discussion to an end. This is going to be an interesting deep dive. Um, I can't wait. I think we're going to get six songs off this album and dive deep into them and really explore what this album has to offer. So yeah, if you like what we're doing, support us on Patreon, buy us a cup of coffee. Yeah, find us on Instagram or Facebook or email us. <laughs> no one's ever emailed us. No, we you know you can call one. Gary's landline, uh, or you can page me. Uh, five five do. five. <laughs> so we we appreciate all you guys. Uh, keep your uh, eyes out for the deep dive coming out next week. All right, see you guys. See ya. Thank you for listening.